In this video, you will learn how to start Docker on a host machine, and we will use the imported VirtualBox Ubuntu machine for that. So start up your VirtualBox, and after it has started, just start the imported Docker 1 virtual machine. This will be your host in this training. After the Ubuntu has been started, just log in with the provided username and password. Your username will be student and the password is password1 with a capital P at the beginning. And this virtual machine has two network interface cards. You can just list them. I will use the IP command for that. And as you can see, we have an ETH1 network interface card with an internal network address. And this internal network address is provided by VirtualBox because this interface card is attached to the virtual switch of VirtualBox. So you can log in through SSH from the same host. And I will use Putty for that. You can use the console if you want. It's just sometimes I just find it much more easier to work through a connection. And OK, just open up. Uh, the putty and I have a previously configured connection for that host for that virtual machine all you need to do is just to fill in the IP address this IP address into the IP address and hostname field and I'll just type in to the save session some name you want I just advise you to use docker one because this is the name of the virtual machine and just click on the save and you will get the same result just double click on that or just type in the IP address and use the same username and password student password one the capital P at the beginning and you can use sudo so you can grab a root shell sudo s u dash and the password is password one because as you know sudo uses your own password Okay, so it's enabled. I just widen our window a bit, okay, to give the output much more space. Okay, and how to install Docker? You have several options. The two main options are to use packages or use the compiled source. We will use packages, but even if you use packages, you have two choices. First, you can use the distributions binary packages. So you could use Ubuntu packages, CentOS packages, and what binary packages your choice of distribution provides you. So let's see this first one, because it's a Ubuntu. I will use apt cache search docker to search for anything related to the term docker. Okay, I got some package names, but as you can see, I have this docker.io linux container runtime and this is what i'm looking for because the others are just clients or some docking uh, programs used by guis okay so type in apt cache show docker.io to see the version it provides okay just clear the screen before that with ctrl plus l and press enter and as you can see from the file name this docker engine version is rather old because it's 0 0.9 and in april 2016 as we recorded this training video the current version of docker engine is 1.10 so it's rather old so the other option is to use the packages provided by docker incorporated so docker io just provides you with the latest packages for all the major distributions so you can find ubuntu packages centos packages suzy red hat and so on okay just clear the screen and see how can i just get them open up a browser window and just navigate to the following url https colon slash slash get docker Dot com. Okay, and as you can see, it's a simple SHA script which provides you with some instructions as well. And we will use the first instruction, the C URL, you could use wget and so on. It will just download the shell script and just execute the shell script. And this shell script will examine your host machine and figures out what kind of Linux distribution it is, which is the version and it will just set up the package repositories from docker io and grab the packages and will install correctly okay so i will use 
this command and I just copy paste you can type in as a matter which way you choose okay and as you can see it just figured out that I have NetPurple enabled and I have an Ubuntu machine because it imports the GPG keys and it will set up the repositories and it just updates the package list and when it's finished with updating the package list, it will just install the Docker engine with the latest version, which is available for this version of Ubuntu. Okay, when it's finished, it will just print out the Docker version. So you can see that's 1.10, this is the latest. And it provides you with some other instructions as well. So it advises you if you want to run or use Docker. As a non-root user, you should just add your user into the Docker group. But remember that if you put your user into the Docker group, this user will be a supervisor to Docker. So it can just administer Docker without any permission limits because there is no access control list inside the Docker daemon. So if you just give the student user administrative permissions when you just put that user into the Docker group, that user will be able to shut down the whole Docker engine, delete containers, delete images, startup containers, interfere with other users' containers as well. So it's an all or nothing approach right now. There are talks that they maybe they will just change it in the future. But right now, it's an all or nothing. In a business or enterprise environment, there will be orchestration tools and the users will just interfere with these orchestration and schedulers and the schedulers will administer Docker on the hosts. Okay, so let's see what does it mean to use Docker as a non-root user. So clear the screen and I will just change to the student user shell. So I just type in su dash student. Okay, and I will just want to know all the information about Docker. So I type in Docker info. This is how you get the information about the Docker daemon, about the containers and so on. And as you can see, it says it cannot connect to the Docker daemon and is it running or not. Okay, just let's see what happens if I just exit from this shell, type in exit, press enter, and issue this command as root, docker info, and as you can see, I have all the permissions. So a normal user is not able to interact even just to grab information about Docker. How is that? That's because Docker has two methods to interact with the Docker engine. If you use the Docker command as a client, you can just connect and administer Docker through a socket. So type in ls-lh var run docker.sock. So this is just a normal Unix socket. And as you can see, the root user has all the permissions, just read-write permissions, and the Docker group has all the permissions to write into the daemon, so to write into this socket. When you are able to write into this socket, it means that you are able to give comments to the Docker engine. Okay, so if I just put my user into that group and I will use another method, type in gpsweedy-a student docker, press enter. You can use any other method, just a user mode or anything else. So student user is added to the Docker group change back to the student user shell, type in su-student and instruct docker with docker info to grab information. And as you can see, right now I'm able to interfere with the docker engine, with the docker daemon. Okay, so exit this shell because I will just want to interact it with a root user. Where we change other options? Just like I said before, there are two methods to connect to the Docker engine, to instruct the Docker daemon. And we have a configuration file under Ubuntu, which resides under the EDC default directory. So change into that directory. CD EDC default list the directory. And as you can see, we have a Docker file. Okay, just open up with your favorite editor. I will just use Wim, 
but you can just use any editor you like, just like MC Edit Nano or so. So Vim Docker, and I just give some instructions to that. Vim, so it will be much easier to read. Okay, this line, the Docker opt holds the instructions how to start the Docker daemon. Okay, what options you want to provide to that. And keep in mind that if you change anything inside the file, according to the options, you have to restart the Docker daemon. And when you restart the Docker daemon, all the containers will be stopped and you have to restart them manually. Okay, and this is because the containerization works in another way than the normal virtualization. But you can just instruct anytime the Docker daemon to restart the failed Docker containers. Okay, what options should I change? Right now, it's not necessary to change anything, but I will provide you with one option. Because I told you there are two methods to interact with the Docker daemon. And the first one was to write into this docker.soc. So use the local socket to administer docker daemon. The other option is to use a network connection. So if I just provide it with the following options, dash h, and give an IP address to that option, just one I have, a colon after that, and a port number. It means that I just binding to that port on that IP address and anybody who can connect to this network port will be able to administer Docker because there is no ECL. So if I just change this option, it means that I will just shut down the local socket. You could use either the local socket or the network socket. You cannot use both at the same time. But be careful because anybody who can connect to that port will be able to administer Docker because there's no ECL either. So right now I just comment out this line. But just keep in mind that you can change lots of options here. And this DNS option, this is a default what you have. But later you can change anything. Okay, just exit from this editor. And let me tell you about the storage drivers. So first clear the screen and issue the docker info command. And as you can see, I have this section called storage driver and it's AUFS and it has a root directory. So what does it mean? The docker will hold the images of containers and the containers and container layers under this directory in several subdirectories and Docker will hold the container directories and layers under this directory, as you will find them in subdirectories. And AUFS is a kernel module which provides the UnionFS for you. And AUFS is enabled by default on Ubuntu servers, but it's not available on Red Hat and CentOS servers, because it's not an upstream kernel module, it's a separate patch, but Ubuntu just integrated it into its own kernel. But on CentOS or Red Hat, if you would like to use Docker under another operating system than Ubuntu, and it's a Red Hat based, you will find the device mapper section here. So device mapper means it will use logical volumes for containers. Okay. And we will have a separate video when we will just install Docker on a CentOS 7 host. But right now, all you have to know that it uses a separate storage driver. And if you just list that directory, class war lib docker aufs, you will find different directories. And these different directories holds different parts of the containers. So you will find the image layers under this subdirectory war lib docker aufs mnt you will find the running containers layers under this directory as well. And there will be a for lib aufs and layers. There will be one file per image. This holds the metadata about the layers. So all the information about these layers. And you will find the container metadata and config files under war lib 
docker containers and here you'll find the container id okay and as you remember when i start up a container it just uses the images and layers and uses unionfs to provide you with one container with one layer and it will just put a read writable layer on top of that and under ubuntu you will just find the read write table layer under the diff directory so it will be the var lib docker aufs diff and here you will find the container ids because every container will get an id in the next video we will run containers and you will learn how to run containers and we will take a look at the containers and the different directories what's inside the different directories when you use the containers so we will examine these directories and subdirectories when we will work with docker containers so in the next video you will learn how to run containers and create containers